Okay, here we go from Ken's entrance. Please, very quiet. We're doing a kind of a Princess Bride version of uh, Scrubs. Hang on, Maiden! We're here! It's like our big expensive episode. It's by far the most ambitious thing we've ever done. There's horses and giants and special effects and villagers and whatnot. Uh, I haven't really paid attention to what they're doing in there from what I understand they're spending a lot of money. So it's very exciting. But every year we do one episode that we, uh, we try to blow our entire budget on for the year. And uh, this is it. <laughs> Once upon a time, a long time ago. It's called My Princess. It's an homage to The Princess Bride, one of my favorite like movie fairy tales of all time. There's so much in this episode. There's sets and effects and uh, cranes and, and just animals. Every year, either by design or by accident, we end up having a show that everybody gets to stretch their legs a little bit, you know? There's pressure to do it uh, as well and, and to make it as fun as, as we've all sort of envisioned it to be, as we've been thinking about it over time. Every department gets to do something special and uh, show why we hired them <laughs> in the first place. Anytime we do something that's different and new and big, it, it challenges everyone. I didn't realize it was going to be as big as it became when we were first writing it. This is one of those times that it was really important to us to see essentially what we consider the whole cast together, you know, and, uh, and so we, uh, it's great to see all you guys working in the same one, including my wife. Ah! I thought it was going to have a, a couple of little fantasy sequences here and there of fairy tale stuff, and it was going to be like three quarters reality, and now it's switched entirely. Before them appeared the bravest, most handsome knight that any of them had ever seen. The knight removes his helmet, revealing it's Dr. Cox. It's the first time anybody other than me and the writers have seen the script. It's horrible grammar for a writer. Me and the writers. Ugh. But uh, yes, we thread it cold and uh, we were kind of excited about it. We don't usually do table reads on the show. I am a horrible um, cold reader. I don't know what's scarier, the monster or that scary old woman. You guys saw that. I was still funny though. Turk's arm reaches out, he gropes Carla's boob. That's what? talking all that. <laughs> Table read, we just, uh, there were a few things that we thought were lacking. We thought that uh, Donald and Judy probably needed a couple of more jokes. We, we wanted to see that character a little more. We sort of enjoyed it, what we had, and we wanted more of that. That's it. Look, are you out your mind, woman? We only got one ball. The sitcoms usually do a table read because you do dress rehearsals and the script evolves as it goes. And on this show, we don't generally, it's like a movie. We shoot six pages a day and then we try to change the jokes on set. Hey, I'm brave. He holds up a big dead fish. I just saved this from drowning. He sets it down. <laughs> Off you go, big fella. <laughs> Off you go, little buddy. Run free! Run free! If the actors, something strikes them as funny in the moment, they're, 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 we've given them free reign to go ahead and go for it. Run away! We were out there and Neil Flynn had a line as the giant. He said, I don't eat babies, I eat toddlers. I don't eat babies, I eat toddlers. They're crunchier. <laughs> and then we shot a version that said, uh, like, uh, I don't eat babies. It's a minute on the lips, a lifetime on the hips. It's really where we get a lot of the much more uh, honest reactions and laughs and things from, from the characters and the actors themselves when they sort of come up with something fresh on the set. Come along, Peppermint. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of fun. You can obviously play around with your jokes. We got, uh, you know, I think it's short enough that we have room to riff and goof around a little bit. Um, have fun with this. It's gonna be a good time. Thank you guys for coming to this. Thing. Delay. And obviously, on this show, Wardrobe has done an amazing job of building these medieval costumes. I had a, a team of ten costumers two costume houses building this stuff. Um, it's a little bit more than just scrubs. Well, we're dressing 50 uh, background and our, pretty much our entire cast. And most of the cast were building costumes from scratch because they have to be doubled and thrown in the dirt and riding on horses. And it's, um, it's the hugest episode we've ever done of scrubs. This is the tightest deadline we've ever had. When, I, when Bill uh, first told me about what he expected, I had a little bit of a heart attack because usually we only have a week to prep things. Um, we got two weeks on this and it still isn't quite enough. Um, I hope we make it. I hope we get it all together by the time we shoot this. I get to be a princess and um, I could not be more excited. 
Elliot's character is the princess, of course, our little princess. So she is volumes and volumes of fabric, a corset that uh, on the first time wearing it was so hot, the stays melted. <laughs> we had to pull them all out and put uh, steel ones in. I honestly, I don't know how people used to dress like this. Like these, the corsets are, you know, a little hard to breathe. So this is one of my favorites. This is the Turla, which is um, gonna be Donald and then Judy. And, uh, and then they, their heads will be these two dots on it, because they're a two-headed monster. Kind of like Brangelina, but it's Turk and Carla. <laughs> this is uh, the Todd's costume. It's a cod piece, but maybe it's called the Todd piece. Discussions about this go way back to season one. Um, what size should the Todd's stuff be? You know, I have a big wand if you want to hold it. Just humongous. The janitor is a giant. He's actually going to be about eight feet tall when he has the whole costume on. Neil Flynn, giant, that was pretty easy, right? The guy's like 6'5". It's, it, all we did was give him bigger shoes. He has special shoes that Bill was dead set on, these special shoes that he wanted. I'm 6'5", but the shoes that I'm wearing add another foot. And uh, you wouldn't think adding a foot would be all that big a thing, but uh, it, it really makes it enormous. I'm in a 16th century knight's armor chain, you know, interwoven chain link around me and it's supposed to look like a mesh armor but it's made of like a knit sweater also nice and breathable on a 95 degree day my costume weighs 426 pounds oh my gosh it weighs a ton it had to be big enough for him to cover over the people that he ran into we used a little christian lacroix trim on there nothing but the best for our for our dark lord i have horns beautiful horns the actors I think love wearing this stuff. They get kind of loopy. Travis gets the good sport of the of the day award. Yeah. They're making him wear tights. These boots are making gold them. disco boots. These are from Studio 54. Yeah, sort of <laughs> 70s, 70s medieval. They're kind of similar. Yeah. My inspiration for this: uh, a little a little Holy Grail meets uh, the Carol Burnett show. So a little Terry Gilliam meets Bob Mackie. These sort of dark medieval with bling. This is a uh, hair and makeup extravaganza. We've all been here since yesterday. Fantasy and character makeups for this episode, which is what was so much fun and what the, the challenge and the most interesting and exciting part for makeup here in wardrobe. Zach wanted all the villagers to look um, Real, realistic. They need to be dirty and dark teeth. You know, we rotted their teeth, we made their hands dirty. The Ted character is called the, the Toad, the Toady, uh, the Toady Hunchback. And what I did with, uh, for his makeup application, um, I wanted him to be covered uh, in warts. I thought someone Toady, you know, would be, would be kind of wartish. Beautiful. So he really, he looked hideous. He looked hideous. And combined with the wardrobe and what Lorna ended up doing with the hair, it's just, it's really funny. We had a lot of choice when it came down to what we wanted to do for hair and makeup. And what I did was I cut the top out of a wig, stuck this to his head, and then we did kind of like a funny comb over. This is definitely the strangest, weirdest uh, get up I've had on scrubs. And the other makeup is the giant. His costume was amazing. He was in lifts. Um, he was built out, really broad shoulders. The challenge for us was um, we needed to be able to create a head and hands that went along with this big body. The piece that went over his head had huge ears in it. Uh, and then we made extended fingers that slipped onto his own and then Carrie's costume wrapped through the fingers and it gave the effect of huge hands. The Dark Lord is near! Hide! Uh, Neil's makeup took about four Four hours. I think it, well, five hours the first day. This is really something. This is a few hours in the chair, you know. The other uh, really elaborate makeup is Krista's, Krista Miller's, and she plays uh, the evil witch. Love, When's Krista going to go camera. through makeup? <laughs> she has, uh, she had a face cast done. They uh, exaggerated her nose, her chin, and then he did an application on her skin, which is latex glue, in order to create wrinkles and textures. Is it bad that my husband has me written in as a witch? in this fairy tale? Is that bad? I don't know. Action! Ah! 
princess makeup, Zach wanted her to look like a real princess, look to look regal. Um, I have about 9,000 eyelashes on. Tons of lashes, bottom lashes, top lashes. As a matter of fact, Sarah would wear her lashes home every night. Princesses are just born real. with long eyelashes. <laughs> we, we, we bring out the glitter, we're ready to go. I don't normally have sparkles on uh, my clavage. I rarely wear makeup on scrubs. You're about to watch me put makeup on for probably the second time this season. I'm putting facial hair on him, chopped facial hair, and then we get to color his skin. Uh, he gets to be bronzed. The best part, I'm about to get bronzed. Yeah. It's actually more gold. Here it doesn't really look like much, but when he gets under the light and, and, and then in the for whatever, costumes. with that green screen behind him, it really, really looks bronzy. This is a human hair wig that was styled um, a week prior. Plus, because uh, we're doing green screen, the hair had to be, we, I wanted long hair and out more afro -y, but it had to be higher and off my neck because um, we're a two-headed monster featured on a single body and nothing can go below the neck. Yep. So we had to go up and out. All right, this is the second half of the Turla makeup. The male half is bronze, the female half is silver. And um, so I was just trying to coordinate the makeups with costumes. This is absolutely the most dramatic look I've had on the show so far. You know, not, not the most dramatic performance, but definitely the most dramatic look. And it's really fun. It's done. She's kind of a cracked out flapper. <laughs> We're in the forest and it's like, horses and just beautiful animals, you know, a little baby goat, and, you know, someone said, not a bad office. It's very Scrubs on location. It's very big, themed, you know, epic movie. You got everything in your toolbox right here to come out, you know, and shoot in the park or just be on a medieval village. And, uh, and I actually thought the village was a lot of fun. So this is our version of a medieval village. Now, we brought in a lot of um, burlap. Uh, sacks to, to hide all the tiles and uh, make it all a little bit older. Nothing sells medieval like headless chickens, deer, something to eat here, uh, squirrel, ye old coffee bucks, that's very traditional. So basically an homage to the Monty Python movie, you know, the Holy Grail. We had two weeks to prepare to get all of this stuff together. That's about five trucks worth of stuff to bring in here and um, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a definite style that has to, you know, be sold here. It just takes a lot of time, it's consuming. You gotta, you know, bring in a, a lots of dead possums and stuff to make sure it really works. I'm actually kind of excited. I've never done an episode in front of a green screen before. It's kind of cool. Because the script sort of took a little while to finish, we wanted to get the actors as excited about it and give them a chance to get familiar with the material before they had to do all this sort of hard green screen work. This whole episode, our characters in the fantasy world are in, you know, on a green screen. I have a question. Yeah. So are Judy and I filming with everybody or are we going to be in front of a green screen? You're never on set. Like, oh, we're only on green screen. Turk wand! But Donald's extraordinarily um, energetic. So it's very challenging uh, for him to sit very still. See, Scott, why don't you tell the DVD story about how you got hit upside the head with a pastrami sandwich? It's challenging for all of us, actually, as actors, to perform uh, in, in front of a green screen with nothing but marks. So you're right here? Straighten up your head. But where are you? I am. Next to you. Those are me. Those, those marks are me. This is the first time I've really been this heavily involved in something involving effects. So for me, it's really cool because I'm, I'm, I'm learning. Are these eyelines right, Dylan? The most challenging part will probably be uh, getting Turla shot correctly in such a way that the heads will actually work. We shot an extra in a bodysuit that's half male, half female. It has some tracking markers on his shoulders. Uh, and then every time we shoot him, we're going to also shoot a plate so I can cut his head off. And then we're going to shoot Turk and Carla on green screen and composite their heads onto the tracking markers. Are we looking? We're looking to the night right there. The night, when the night arrives, is he says, Princess, Princess. 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 Uh, the two of us uh, have the greatest challenge of not having ex uh, not having had experience the actual shoot. Being on green screen does not compare even a little bit to being on set. And they were surrounded by goats and horses and sheep and, you know, uh, uh, everything medieval. You know what I mean? A village. You know what I got? <laughs> I got a green screen. We have to kind of like look at a little bit of the clips and invent the whole thing in our minds. And we have to 
We're at the mercy of everybody around us. This is the most green screen we've ever done for Scrubs. I'm the Jar Jar Binks version on Scrubs. Get this on the DVD. I'm Jar Jar Binks of Star Wars. <laughs> That's who I am. Great, cut. We really wanted to have our all-star director, um, and Zach is a great director. Hey, writers, is Zach a good director? It's the writing staff. Yeah. All right, great, so let's put him on horse on a mark, and we'll do a pickup for the dialogue. I love Zach and Zach directs, and it's the bane of my husband's existence. He's so good that my wife, who plays Dr. Cox's wife on the show, whenever I'm directing to drive me crazy, she always says, when's Zach gonna direct? It's like having a movie director when Zach directs. It's just telescope. telescope. That's what I'm saying, it's going it. in. Yeah. You want a telescope And it is, if you go on there, it looks like a real movie set. When I direct, it looks like a bunch of college idiots hanging around making a TV show. I'd like Bill to see how nice I am to his wife. <laughs> Bill and I have a joking rivalry uh, about directing. <laughs> I'm not nearly as talented. He's been great to me. He, 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 all joking aside, he really gives me a lot of leeway with, the, with directing the episodes that he doesn't give to all the other directors. It's actually such an amazing job. I mean, this is one of the hardest episodes we did. It doesn't really seem to faze him that uh, he has to act under it. Run away! Run away! He's probably a little bit more difficult to deal with when he's just acting. Donald and I are like other directors' worst nightmares when we, when we get into like really silly, goofy, late night, silly mode. When they're acting together only though, ugh, uh, it's constant babysitting with the two of those. Oh God, just call me when they're done. Donald is on his best behavior when I'm directing. Well, I'm on my best behavior always. No, 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 no! <laughs> I did decide I had to kick you. As a director, I, I totally enjoy him. I think he's pretty brilliant at it. I hope that uh, when he watches this, I, he doesn't double his rate. Uh, it is being directed by uh, young Zach Braff. Yeah. <laughs> so this episode is not Scrub Swan Song. It's our last, it's the last episode that there'll be horses and special effects. When you're the director, you're a little harried and stressed, so there's a lot on your mind, but if you stop and take it in, you're like, this is, this is the greatest job there is, you know? Getting paid to try and make people laugh in my mind, is, is the best job you could ever have. The swan song will still be the finale when we kill JD. We won't, why would I kill him? It's a comedy. I'm glad you guys got to come and check it out, and I hope you enjoyed yourselves. If you didn't enjoy yourselves, you know, you paid the money for the DVD. So thank you! Cut check, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, I'm a good game.